But I can't get rid of that. Nope. <coughs> around. Welcome back to the Turf District for episode 63 of the Eskimo Empire podcast. I am Andrew, I'm your host here, and welcome to the Turf District. As always, we've got a great show for you tonight. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, boy, we've got another win to talk about, so how exciting is that? Yay! All right, let's go with... Uh, you guys didn't join in on the cheering, what the hell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's, uh, let's see who's here. <laughs> nice. Let's see who's here. As always, UT! What's up? How you doing? <laughs> Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my. Oh my. Well, anyway, uh, how you doing, UT? <laughs> I'm, I'm great. I'm wonderful. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming down as always. We're glad to have you here. And of Happy course, to, to his immediate right, as always, super fan Mike. Oh, I was going to say, where's the jazz hands? I was, <laughs> jazz <laughs> hand, just one. And just one? <laughs> that was kind of like Pee Wee Herman wave, but that's fine. We'll take it. So hope that's all I do this like Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> that's right, yes. A quick glance at the table as we're going around. We have beer and Timbits, and we're talking CFL. I think this show just became the most Canadian ever. All right, let's go over to... Oh, Chantel says boo, no jazz hands. All right, <laughs> joining us in the Turf District for the first time, longtime contributor to the show, it is Thomas. How are you doing? Good. Kind of not as good as Uncle Tim, but then again, I just got here. <laughs> yes, that's very true. This is what happens. Yes. So uh, now it's not often we let other people come in with other colors, but uh, in this particular scenario, we're, yeah, I'm wearing green too. You you do have green. I'll, I'll give you. So when we do the selfie, those better be showing. Um, <laughs> I do have to say that. Um, at least now you have bragging rights over your brother because you've actually been in the turf district, so that's uh, yeah. it's good to have that. Absolutely. Um, and now, his picture will hang here. His picture yeah. will hang in the turf district, yeah. even with that jersey on. Yeah. Um, the, uh, that's so, pretty cool, though. I like that. <laughs> now, give, give us a bit of history why the Montreal jersey, because uh, people may uh, not know. Well, I was born in Montreal, and uh, my first actual CF CFL game was in Montreal, and I figured, why not? Yeah, absolutely. my first time in Wilson Stadium, I just I got very overwhelmed by just how awesome the CFL was, and I figured I'm there, throw on a jersey and join the team. Absolutely, absolutely. And then very when cool. did you come to Edmonton? I came here originally in 2006. Okay. And then I moved back in 2008, just prior to my father passing away, okay. and that didn't quite work out. So I moved back <laughs> out here and. Here I am in the turf district. And here you are. That's perfect. Excellent. And we see you Welcome. at Eskimo Games, so that's great. Yep. Um, that's good at West of us. Exactly, yes. Now, Coach Vic had a question for all of us. Um, with the 10,000 football players in CIS and NCAA, why is it hard to find a decent <laughs> kick returner that will have no fumbles and can actually run? So, um, uh, do you follow CIS at all? No, or? I can't say that I do. Okay. Um, any, 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 you guys? What, what, what do you think, Mike? Like, I don't, I don't know what to do. Like, I think it's not a matter of not able to find these people. We've got Troy Stoudemire on the practice roster. Mm -hmm. uh, I was actually talking about this earlier on Ask's fans. I think the main issue is he doesn't trust Stoudemire with his other role, which right. would be backup receiver. Correct, yes. Uh, we all went to Football 201, and we're lucky enough to have Coach Moss come out and show us the development yes, of yes. some of that, and we'll be talking about that on the podcast. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, so stick around. St yeah, definitely <laughs> download this week. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I, that's just it. Is It's a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the whole, just the, the way they go through developing the play, installing the play, chessing it in practice, changing it. Exactly. Fox means a hundred things. Yeah. And how do you know all of those hundred things exactly. based on one word? So I think that's just the issue because Joe is a backup receiver. Yeah. So they trust him enough that if an, er uh, an injury came along and he had to step in, right. they're fine with it. But Stoudemire doesn't know the the ha the playbook well enough yet. So. And one of the things that you suggested to me this week in one of the conversations I we was had. Drunk. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> it was still a good suggestion well. for a drunkard. I'm impressed. Um, what what maybe we had talked about is, is it time when Pinbell is healthy to have Zilstra take over the returning duties? Yep. Because we know that he can play 
receiver. And then you've got both Bell and White in the yeah, lineup. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe um, that's a change. I think the only issue they have there is they want Zilstra, as we now know it is. As we know it's, yeah, They went exactly. Zilstra to Zilstra, back <laughs> yeah. to Zilstra. Zilstra yeah. <laughs> what does he know? It's only his name. Well, um, I mean, he only told us, yeah. Yeah. Number 83. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not Jason Tucker. <laughs> um, I think that they want him involved more in the offense, and they might be afraid that He's playing too much. He'll be either winded or well, could be potentially injured. I, I'd yeah, rather so. see him at the slot back position. Yeah, or, or, yeah, personally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, and he had a good show this week. But you so know that's that good. that's a good question. Out of ten thousand football players, why can't we we get a kick returner? Well, who wants to be a re- kick returner? Like really? Like who really wants to do it? Well, is it a glory get spot them, or is it a you get a touchdown? Like, is <laughs> it is? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's 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 one of the harder positions to play. Yeah, I mean, you got I'm sure you, you got twelve guys bearing down on you. Yeah. I'd I'd run fast too. You know, At least like, we can block for them. <laughs> you know. Oh my. Oh my. Okay. <laughs> well, but well. I mean, that's a good one, uh, Vic. I like that question, but it's just it's a tough position. Yeah, he really, really wants it. Yeah, absolutely, yes. All right, uh, let's go to our next question uh, asked from Leanne. So which position is the most underrated on the team, do you think? So let's uh, start with you. You you want me to come back to you? Yeah. Fine. Yeah. All right. Uh, (laughs) All right, super fan. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of positions that don't get talked a lot, Mm -hmm. uh, talked about a lot. Uh, Fullback is Mm -hmm. one. I mean, if it wasn't for the fact it's Calvin McCarty, you probably wouldn't hear about as much when it's Mike Miller. Yeah. Uh, special teams players when you're not a returner <laughs> doesn't get talked a lot. Any yeah. position? <laughs> Sorry, coach just had the greatest response. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, podcast host. Yes. I totally agree. <laughs> Definitely most underrated. Most underrated. <laughs> yes. Thanks, coach. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's good. Okay. Yeah, I think I said anything that you're not getting. I mean, you don't hear a lot about the long snappers unless there's a mistake. Okay. Uh, yeah, don't list them the all show. off. You leave some exactly, for us. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Leave. Pick one. Pick one. The most <laughs> underrated. Hey. Yeah. Ooh, that's so tough, eh? For Our guest gets nothing yeah. to answer. Uh, I'll go answer. with fullback. Fullback, beautiful. Yeah. Thomas, who are you going to go well, with? Well, Mike stole my answer. I was going to say pretty much the special teams, unless there you're you Sean White and you're kicking or you're returning punts, mm-hmm. you really don't know who's up there and what they're doing. So I'm going to go with special teams. Sometimes they don't know what they're doing either. <laughs> <laughs> what? Totally, totally agree with that, Thomas. I think anybody on the special teams is, is underrated. Anybody on the special teams? Well, I think Pick so. One. Well, exactly. <laughs> well, look, at, look. If it wasn't if, if it wasn't for as many years of service uh, uh, with BC, look at Naraki. I mean, the guy yeah. is yeah. Iraqi. I mean, the guy yeah. is uh, is absolutely a phenomenal player. Yeah. And look at what he did last game. Yeah. He stepped up to the D line. Yeah. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I think he's that type of a position is underrated. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Uh, I will say, um, although we talk about them. <laughs> fairly frequently on the show. I'm actually going to say the center position because I don't think that a lot of people realize how much that center p- needs to know and how they kind of guide that offensive line. And so uh, if I had to pick one player that is a bit underrated for me, I'd Justin. say the center and hey, Sorensen, yeah, you know, we got your back. That's right. So me well hopefully yeah uh all right let's do a quick empire points update so leanne is in number one spot still tony allen up into second papa duck jumps over into third and uh jedi Chantel into fourth and uh podcaster ryan is still hanging around in fifth because eskimo fans are going to pass him before long we know that uh, possibly an Alouettes fan, depends on how well he does tonight. Uh, so, congrats to uh, Cappy D, who is still leading in the pick'em, but uh, there's a couple of people making some charges here in the late season, so we'll have the full update on that on the pod this week. Of course, the show is out on Wednesday. Uh, we're going to recap this enormous win over Winnipeg, which definitely puts us back into a playoff picture, which is crazy when you think about it uh, from where the season started but uh, great for the boys to get back into a position 
Uh, that, oh my. Uh, another Eskimo history segment, of course. Uh, we were going to review the rest of last week's games and, of course, have Uncle Tim's Game of the Week, as always. Uh, on Friday, the game preview will come out and we'll be joined by none other than Thomas's brother, Cliffy D. So uh, we will have the Pine Brothers on for the game preview on Friday. Of course, the game is on Monday, Thanksgiving Monday, in uh, Percival Mol- Molson Stadium. Did I say that right? Yes. Yeah, lovely in uh, Montreal so uh, it's early start for us it's going to be starting at 11 in the morning so make sure you've uh, cracked your be- pff, easy Crap for me to what? make sure you've <laughs> cracked your beers early and uh, we will definitely be uh, <laughs> the popcorn and chips oh Leon just said Cliffy D in the pines oh that's wait a minute uh, did we just become pines I don't know how that anyway okay uh <laughs> Anyway, uh, make sure that you uh, catch that one on Friday and, of course, uh, the Owl's Flight deck as well this week with Cliffy D. Um, Again, our show out Wednesday. Uh, As always, I'm just drinking today. Oh, yeah, I forgot this. Uh, The YouTube channel. Don't forget that. Yes, all the Periscopes are going up there. We will uh, make sure that they get up there and uh, every week. And as we have older ones to post, we will definitely put them. Uh, Somebody just asked if I'm a CFL fan. Uh, a <laughs> little bit. A little bit. I got a, a lot of stuff that would say probably if you look around that room. Ooh, nice. I like the pose. Wow. That's pretty good. Yes, we are all CFL fans for sure. And CFL completely. So um, anyway, uh, thank you guys uh, for being part of the show. Remember to find us on Twitter and Facebook. Be part of the conversation about the Edmonton Eskimos and the CFL. Uh, Show is out on Wednesday. We will absolutely talk to you then.